those Dhamma summaries that we chant every now and then. The world is swept away, it does not endure, offers no shelter, no one in charge, has nothing of its own, and it's a slave to craving. The first three have to do with the fact that things are in constant stressful, not self. And they come from a conversation that the monk Ratabala had with the king, Gauravya. The irony there is, even though things are not all that satisfactory, here the king is eighty years old. And when Ratabala asks him if he's strong as he used to be, he's, well, no. I used to think I had the strength of two men, but now I mean to put my foot one place and it goes someplace else. He has a wind disease that's so strong that sometimes his courtiers think and maybe they hope he's going to die. He has all this wealth, but it's going to be something he has to leave behind. All these three things illustrate aging, illness, death. But then Ratabala illustrates the teaching on the world being a slave to craving with saying, if suppose someone came and told you there were kingdoms to east, west, north, south, even a kingdom across the ocean, that you are strong enough, or your army is strong enough to conquer, would you conquer it? And here's the guy, he's so old he can hardly walk. He's about to die. He said, yes, of course, go for more. What this shows is that our cravings and our desires don't diminish with age. It's not the case that as we get older we get wiser or automatically. We begin to see how the things of the world are not worth going to. We tend to hold on all the more. If you haven't made a habit of letting go of unskillful thoughts, unskillful words, unskillful deeds, it doesn't get easier as you get older. And it's because of the things we hold on to that we Take rebirth. It's just anything that comes our way. If it, the mind hasn't been trained, it'll grasp at anything. Good, bad, indifferent. It just holds on for fear that it's going to be annihilated. And it never has enough. It keeps coming back for more and more and more. This is why we practice, is to find that there really is something better than all this. It's not the case we say, well, this is just the way things are, I'm going to learn how to let go and be okay with being equanimous. That doesn't cut the cake either, because as soon as you really feel threatened, you find out there are things that you hadn't let go of and they're threatened, and you really hold on. So you've got to keep digging down inside. Wherever anything is obviously an unskillful habit, strip it away because there are going to be other unskillful habits that are a lot more subtle. And if you can't take care of the really obvious ones, you can't get rid of the obvious ones. The subtle ones are just going to stay there. So as you go through the day, you're trying to develop the mind. That's the Pali word for meditation, bhavana. But it doesn't mean, doesn't mean just sitting here with your eyes closed or doing walking meditation. As you go through the day, everything you do, ask yourself, is this skillful? The things I'm thinking, the things I'm saying, the things I'm doing. If you can see they're unskillful, try to figure out, well, why do I want them? What's the allure? When you can see the allure and see the drawbacks together, then the mind says, okay, enough of that. So keep digging around because you don't want to have a lot of unfinished business weighing you down and pulling you around when the time comes to go. And of course, if it's not weighing you down and pulling you around right now, so much the better. Then you've got the present and the future taken care of. But as long as there's still work to do, okay, you take some joy in the fact that you are working on a good project here. This insatiable mind that we have. And so even though it can see that things are in constant stressful, not self, it still goes for them again and again and again. We're here to find that there is something better. And as long as we haven't found that something better, keep reminding yourself there's more work to do, good work to do. 
and do what you can to make sure you have the energy to do it. Because we don't know how much time we have. They might start lifting the quarantine, people might start coming to the monastery, and who knows? Who's susceptible, who's not? It's like a lottery. So we have the opportunity right now to practice 100 percent. So give it all you've got.